off the top of my head, the Hebrew midwives, Moses, Rahab, Jeremiah, Elijah, Ezekiel, Jesus Christ himself, Peter, Paul, Paul the Carp, Martin Luther, Bonhoeffer, so many people. So what did these guys have in common? These saints of old. They broke the law. They broke the law of the state. So I did a video recently about Christians and smoking marijuana. And if you're coming in late to this, just know my interviewee and I, I think we were pretty clear. We were reasonable, but we were clear. Smoking pot for Christians, in our opinion, with the arguments we made, is foolish and ultimately sinful. Dude comes in, drops a comment that blew me away. He said, why is this even being discussed? Breaking the law is a sin for Christians. Period. Move on. That's not a quote. You can go back, find the comment if you wish. With that sort of inflexibility, shouldn't even talk about it, because breaking the law is a sin. Done. Now look, I am in a Christian tradition with a robust theology of authority. So I'm Presbyterian and Reformed. Sphere theology, Kuiper's spheres, something a lot of you might be familiar with. And there are other traditions out there that have well-developed theologies of authority as well. Roman Catholic, Anglican, maybe Lutheran a little. I have no idea about the Eastern churches. But I actually grew up in churches without such a well-developed theology in that area. Baptistic and the Baptistic Pentecostal circles. Even there, I would never have heard such an outrageous thing. Christians must obey the law. To disobey the law is a sin. Period. Move on. Where is this dude working from? This dude who dropped the comment. He's working off of Romans 13. Obey the magistrate. He has given the sword. For good. If you do evil, fear him. Okay. And Paul, in no uncertain terms, tells us to obey the state. You have to take the narrative of all of scripture. Am I copping out in this? No. Absolutely not. But to allow that one passage to dictate your entire theology is to actually lose the context of that passage. Take, for example, thou shalt not kill, one of the Ten Commandments. It drives people to become pacifists. It also makes people who uh, attack Christianity go crazy with bloodlust because we say that God says do not kill, thou shalt not kill and and then people are killing in the Bible well exactly, that's actually why some of the translations say do not murder not only does the story of the historical books Joshua and on show that God commands killing and that there is righteous killing But in the books of the law themselves, someone is killed this way. This is the sort of restitution you make. The distinction between manslaughter and murder. Self-defense. That kind of thing. It's all there. So, you need to read all of that when you're talking about the Ten Commandments. Same with the passage about it being being better to marry than to burn. But marrying not being an ideal in St. Paul. Early Christians practically worship virginity in some places and some times. And even today, the entire Roman church has an unmarried priesthood. Why is that? Because when St. Paul was writing and telling Christians who were about to be persecuted, because you're about to be persecuted, don't be consumed with worry for children and a wife, because they're coming to kill you. They're coming to persecute you. But if you look at the entire narrative of Scripture, to marry is not just something you guess some people have to do. It is a desirable thing. It is what God wants 
for most people in most times and most places. If the Romans are coming to kill you, maybe don't get married. You have to look at the whole narrative of scripture. Same thing with this. Christians need to obey the law, period. Surely, cannot be what this commenter meant. Surely this commenter did not mean the Nazis knock on the door, let them in, and tell them where the Jews are. In fact, you shouldn't even have shown them in the first place. So just don't even let the Jew into your house. That's what that would mean. Surely, that's not what you're saying. Is it complicated? Is it difficult? Should Dietrich Bonhoeffer have participated in an assassination attempt against Hitler? We can definitely talk about that. But we definitely know that God's law is higher than man's law. What does that mean? Let's talk about it. It cannot be true that disobeying man's law is a sin as a categorical statement.